there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just a little um, kind of nice musical note since this, and, and history, since and this there came is music up. Here. In the um, unedited, in the uncut, in the full version of Showboat, um, Jerome Kern, who you can feel in that score, he is grappling with, you know, what do I do with, with operetta, which is my lineage, with, with ragtime, with, with a blues-tented song, with spirituals, how do I make this a whole? In the overture, there is, he quotes the um, score to the Williams and Walker show in Dahomey. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's even, a, the chorus even sings, in Dahomey, where the Africans play. <laughs> so that's in the, um, it's in the, the a full, the score. Yeah, exactly. For the that, show. Yeah, and that full the version of it didn't make it to the, to the Broadway show. Yeah, you know, the original it version of the show was Broadway much show. longer. Yeah. And then you've got the two films. Right. And to me, the more interesting one is the one directed by James Whale. Oh, God, the 30 something. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I understand that, uh, I think I remember reading that Lena Horne, was very upset that, that she, she didn't did get not to get the role in the fifties version. Right. Uh, yeah, because Ava Gardner wrote it. Who was a very good friend? Exactly. exactly. Oh my God, that biography of, of Lena Horne that came out when she was yeah. uh, she wasn't dead yet, but she was failing. Yeah. Stormy weather. Stormy yes. weather. Oh boy, Fascinating. not a great information. Yes. yes, 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 yes. You know, in terms of our history also, I was talking about this earlier, um, there's a biography of Hattie McDaniel, and I think I overheard you. One of the most um, painful things in it is not only that you know, she gives some good performances in those Hollywood films, she also had um, a real career as um, a blues and vaudeville performer. She was a drummer, and she sang, and she was known as Hi Hat Hattie. Um, even got her on a record. But when um, Walter White, Lena Horne, the, you know, the new old bourgeois um, young lions who were going to reform Hollywood and challenge it, arrived, this huge chasm opened up between the old performers who had basically been playing, you know, some of them had probably been in Birth of a Nation, you know, been playing maids right. and servants and whatever, and, you know, these new, um, new young, um, Blacks backed by the NAACP who were not going to take it. Um, you know, it, so it, it just it turned into a whole you know, color, skin color, social status, whatever. Um, you know, a lot of pain, a lot of anger, a lot of misunderstanding going back and forth. And she chose to go away. Lena Horn. Lena Horn. Yeah. yeah. I mean, quite. She, could, quite do, understand she could do much more, which is very, which is very much the history we're talking about. There was more room, even in Lena Horne's day, as in Sammy Davis Jr.'s, for a for a, a singer, a, a, a stage career, cabaret, you know, right. nightclubs, um, an occasional musical. Right. Which is why, when if you study blacks in film, you have to study these other fields yes, as well, right. because otherwise you lose them. Lose track of them, Freddie Washington, yeah. you know, Mary McKinney, and all of them. Where did they go? <laughs> you know, they didn't disappear. They're on stage. They're in Europe. Yeah, you know, exactly. Many places. Yeah. And they're having, they're changing careers. Freddie Washington had a career before the movies, as um, and before I think even. No, it was it was after she was in Shuffle Along. She had a career as a ballroom dancer. <laughs> They could they, they, they do just about anything, theater required, or film. So I'm thinking maybe we should take some questions. Please. I think Michael wanted to ask one. I did. Do I need to get the mic or am I, can we just talk? Speak up, I think. Okay, good. <laughs> first of all, thank you so much. This has been so illuminating. This is my first time seeing this film. And so some of the things that struck me are the things that are, I, I want to say, like primitive reactions. And um, primitive uh, reaction to primitive yeah, exactly. environment. But, but things. But I, I wanted you to talk to me. Tell, tell me about the way that children are depicted and the way that animals are looked at in the film. I think those are really interesting things. That's interesting. Well, the children seem to me straight out of Uncle Tom's head. Mm -hmm. The hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also yeah. don't forget. Um, well, actually, it's too early for that. But it will subsequently appear. Uh, the little. 
masters, yeah. uh, which is a whole cult of lineage mm -hmm. that uh, goes on. I think also, too, Also, a lot of vaudeville performers, women, would have little black dancers around mm -hmm. them, so who were sometimes very talented, who were called their pigs. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, I think also, um, if you look at the history of the, the uh, images, the illustrations and postcards and photographs from the turn of the century, you're going to see children like this all throughout. Mm -hmm. um, and I personally think that they were perceived as cute by some. I guess some people wanted to kill them and destroy them and, and uh, make sure that they didn't reproduce the way Hitler would. And mm -hmm. then some people wanted to take them home and pick them. Mm -hmm. And uh, interestingly enough, I think in that scene where those children are being scared by the white children with the sheep, it's a mixture. Mm -hmm of feelings about those children. I mean those those were not those were not unlovely images mm -hmm. there. They were not portrayed the way the adults were. So that was interesting to no, me. They, they are like really little fancy hair. Those, there the they are. Mm -hmm. you know. Earlier, they're, they're more like little bundles. Right. You know? mm -hmm. They're um, bundles. Yeah, yeah. They, fall bundles. The they fall off the bag. They fall off the bag. They scatter. Right. Right. Whereas, you know, the little animals mm -hmm. are very lovingly. The animals are. are okay, the animals are, you know, are beyond. The dogs and the cats. I'm assuming they're all very trained. But they're trained. But they're the puppies, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the puppies. Mm -hmm. She girl. has white the trained puppies. They must have been. But they're but they're no. they're part of the domestic. They belong to the you know to the domestic pastoral, and they're, they're I cherished. And they also embody you know little human oh, yeah. moments and impulses. The yeah. thing about them is they're major actors. They they pull major weight in terms of what's going on. Um, you know, like the the cat and the dog fighting. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, this union hostilities begin. Mm -hmm. Um, exactly. They're always used in a very, very heavy-handed metaphorical way mm -hmm. for things that are going on. Whereas the children seem more, well, first of all, they're in abundance. They're like and and they're, they're like props. They fall off the wagon. Uh, but they are cute. I mean, I, I can sort of hear him almost saying, you know, they're so cute when they're little. You know, like, <laughs> yes, <that's right. laughs> look what happens when they grow up, see? You think that's cute, don't you? But also, wait till it gets to be six foot two. Well, exactly. And in fact, in the dance scenes, you know, the children are still looking kind of cute, the black children, and the adults in the dance scenes are not looking cute. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> they are a warning. You're not going to age well. There's some writing about what went on, on the, uh, in terms of the directing of the black cast in Birth of a Nation. They were fully segregated. Um, and um, I wish I could call it to mind, but I know that there is some writing about the way they were treated and how those performances were elicited. Because remember, one of the benefits of silent film is that you could be standing there saying all kinds of things. It's not going to be on the film. <laughs> so they were being told, you know, bend over more, you know, get further down, you know. Um, <laughs> Who knows, like uh, Spike Lee likes to get his actors upset sometimes. I mean, you know, who knows what was going on in their segregated camps. They probably uh, were not being taken care of and fed in the same way. Huge, huge cats probably camped out, you know. And so um, I think there were many things in terms of eliciting that performance. Also, you might as well mention that at least two scenes were cut as a result of the protests in New York. And um, you know they wanted to protest it being shown, and what they got was two scenes cut. The what I've heard is that one scene is of the little girl getting raped, uh, mm -hmm. the little one that's running. I forget the name. The May Marsh. The May, Marsh. May Marsh. May Marsh. Little uh, sister. That's supposedly mm -hmm. May Marsh is raped by Gus, as well as whatever else you see. Which to me, I don't know if it really fits. The other scene is supposed to be of Madame Sultan as a wealthy negress with her entourage of people and her horse and what do you call it, a carriage of four, mm -hmm. um, sort of displaying the wealth of, of uh, what she has. And I just think it's interesting to think that these were the two scenes that were thought to be the most offensive. 
Who did that one necessarily be offensive?